question. Tamijin, is this the end of David Coote in the Premier League? It should be. I mean, it really should be. Honestly, when I first saw it this morning, as I was getting ready for the morning coffee show, uh, it was like somebody had posted in the Discord. And I didn't even initially bring it up on the show because I was not sure if it was legit. And I was like, dude, there has to be a lookalike or something. Like, just watching it, it just did not feel like it was... It could be real. It just was so out there that I thought it could not be real. Uh, but I'll tell you this. Aside from, I, I'm sure, you know, PJMOL, and I, I know he already said it's not true, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, there are ways to find out those. But I had not even thought of this until uh, in the morning. Like, Matush, I think, is the one who brought it up. It's not only like Klopp and Liverpool and stuff. The fact that he put the German in there. It also has gives like a negative vibe, mind you, in a country where the the coach, the national team coach, is German now as well. And but I did not even hear it like that. But I now I you know I talk we talked about it on the show. I can kind of see that angle, and there could be you know some German players are like what the hell kind of a thing because it almost sounded like him being a German is part of the problem. Uh, the way he said it, but I mean that would be only like a side story, but. Yeah, I mean, I don't understand how you can have this guy ref a game afterwards of Liverpool, of a game that impacts Liverpool, uh, whatever the case might be, and talk about integrity afterwards. I think that ship has sailed. Maybe like dump him down to championship or something like that, uh, but I just don't see him in the Premier League. Yeah, I, I actually think it goes even – and I – I understand where you and Matusha are coming from with the German side because I think the whole xenophobe type of mentality of like the national and how it was a foreign manager and the way he kind of even made a comment about it. The fact that he also, he didn't just really rip on Liverpool the club. He then kind of shit on Liverpool the city. Yes. Which in my mind also means Everton has a reason to say he might have something against us, this guy who grew up outside of Manchester that doesn't. So now you you could literally argue it's not even like you can't have him ref any matches or be the match official for any matches at the top half of the table. You have to question the integrity of what he's doing when he's refereeing matches at the bottom of the table. And when you look back at the history of him in Liverpool, he and Klopp never saw eye to eye. Let's be real. And I think it happened long before the Van Dyke foul with Pickford. Because everybody points to that moment. I can think of, I mean, you have the Burnley match where yeah. he calls the late penalty. You have uh, the Tottenham match where he's one of the assistant VARs. He's in the room during good process, guys. <laughs> like, he's... Yep. Yeah. Like he somehow, like I know, like it was gonna happen, right? But he's in freaking everywhere. And then he's in, and what people forget is, is he is the match official who doesn't call the handball against Rodri against Everton yep. when it literally could have given Liverpool a title yep. and kept Everton up. And I think this is probably me going into like full, you know. Cersei tin hat that thing's the really Odegaard weird. handball in the Arsenal game. Like, there's so much that comes out, and I know you know there are people looking through every single game that he ref now, and there's going to be more probably coming out. But I just don't know how he can come back afterwards and be like, Oh, okay, now he's going to be all fair. Like, it's just not going to happen. So, two things I got to ask you this because you're a father. And you're a father of, and we'll, you know, full disclosure, you've mentioned it before, and there's pictures behind your wall, uh, behind your head, so I can say it. You're a father of two beautiful, smart young women, which I'm sure you have tried to protect every second of every moment and from bad decisions alike. Do you feel like in today's world with cell phones and videos and, and, and like, does there almost need to be an additional layer of stupidity knowledge given on the youth of America nowadays to like remind people that nothing you say or do that could be recorded or documented is safe? Because to me, this feels like a guy who must have been sitting on a couch with someone he thought was his mate, his best friend, 
like I guess I don't understand how anyone who had as much to lose as David Coote would have would ever sit down as wasted as they are, as sober as they are, as frustrated as they are, and say those types of things. And the fact that there were two videos that were shared, and the second one is him going, you know, we got to record, we got to delete this video. And the only thing going through my mind is, is I would have had a whole nother attitude during the second video when my brain went off. I would have literally been going for the phone to try to like smash it, break things like it wouldn't have been me begging for that video to be deleted. It would have been me negotiating, like, what do I need to do to get that video taken down? Like, yeah. I guess I bring it up as you as the parent, because I know my friends say all the time, like, their biggest fear is that their kids won't be smart enough in their young teenage and, like, informidable years not to send something stupid, say something stupid. I mean, how can someone at this level fall for this type of mistake i honestly think the young generation is more aware that there are cameras and phones everywhere to be honest with what you more than point? us because we're not as used to it right like th that wasn't a thing for us for the longest time and i mean i know when i was you know i can like retail you're dealing with people there's always that risk right you get buddy buddy with people and you see them as you know you start like making jokes and stuff like that. That might not be hundred percent appropriate that if you just wouldn't make to a stranger because they don't know you, they might take it the wrong way, but you know, this person is not going to take you the wrong way because they know you kind of a deal. And, but then you always run the risk of one being taken out of context and two, that you got to be careful what you say, regardless of how you think, Oh, he's not going to take it like that because he knows me and stuff because people can turn things on you when your relationship goes south what you thought who was your friend and you know like was like oh that, i know that was funny you were just joking is going to be like oh but you're joking though i thought you were serious i was offended and stuff like that so in this case i honestly think and if you look at the first video this is a guy if i was good i was not i would not call that guy my buddy or my mate because it to me looks like they had a very high or smashed or both uh coots on hands because if you notice he eggs on the conversation this is not a, like a natural conversation where like the guy says it he specifically asks about liverpool almost to get that on tape and I almost feel like somebody wanted to take advantage of this and God knows what they were doing all this time maybe uh you know god knows how many bets could have to pay off for them i mean there's there could be a lot more this is me being paranoid i'm putting that hand no, I, I, but there I, could I, be I'm a lot of me. layers coming up to this and because the second video so who saw this video i guess that's one of like the biggest questions that's going to come out who saw this video because the second video is addressed to the viewer right hey you know like we don't want to get his career derailed blah 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 okay then just fucking delete the old one but no, like this was sent to a bunch of people initially. Uh, I'm not a Snapchat person and I know how that stuff works. The younger generation can't tell us, but maybe something like that. Who saw this? Like, is Oliver watching this video? Is it, you know, like, is Anthony Taylor watching this video cracking up? I think those are going to be some of the things that's going to keep coming out as they dig more into this, or they're going to bury this because it's going to come out to a point where you, you want to bury it rather than open it up more. Yeah, I feel like what's going to end up happening is probably going to be a 50-50 barrage where half of it's going to be them burying him. And I think the other half is going to be some form of spin to make an excuse. Like, <laughs> no, but I, I think the spin is going to be, though, that he fucked up and he's gone. Yeah. But he wasn't a terrible person, and we're not filled with terrible people. And by the way, while you're at it, don't look over here and ask who the rest of the people in the group chat is. Because clearly this person sat on this, and the fact that they sat on it, right, until the cusp of an international break, coming off the Saturday in which 
he refereed a match against a club that there is a major questionable decision that he almost didn't make. And the idea that he could be in even more hot water, but he's bailed out because Darwin Nunez finished yep. wrapping around the keeper. Because if he misses that shot or shanks it, the VAR probably makes him send off. I Lee would think so. Bailey. But now there's a whole nother can of worms that comes out when he almost didn't even call the foul, let alone give advantage. He he actually never gave advantage because he claimed it was a clean foul on Bailey versus Mo. Yeah, because I honestly I never went back and especially after this came out and like tried to see if he like just motion like no, keep no. play or no. There was nothing. He actually went like this. Like, like nothing. Oh, that's even worse. Yeah, see, I did not go back and see what he did on that one. It, it genuinely, it could have been so much worse. I can't believe, you know, I'm actually kind of in a way defending him in any way. Because <laughs> I don't think yesterday had anything to do with the video. Because I think when you know that video is out there like that, and if it's true that he was really being blackmailed, then... That's a whole nother thing of what was this guy's real motive and was he set up? At the end of the day, this goes back to like my old world of someone's like, well, I didn't know there was a hidden camera there when I said all those racist things. Yeah, And it's like, well, I don't care that the camera was hidden. You exposed yourself as a racist. And now we all yeah. know it. You didn't deserve to have a camera and that's illegal, but I'm not in the court of public opinion i'm just in public opinion like i'm not in the court yeah exactly and i think you know that's why i mean that's what i'm saying you know like if you're he's sitting there with his mates or whatever like you know you and i are sitting we can make i don't know like a joke about somebody's i don't know why we would make a high joke with two of us but you know what i mean like you can make it and then you're like oh you're like judging their appearance blah 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 they're like no man we're just like joking and stuff but then you're recording that and getting that out there. And this is your profession. But like I say, man, the way that video is set up, it's almost like he said it, right? Or he's talked some shit. And then they were like, hold on, hold on. We got to record this. And I then he popped exactly the camera. that's exactly what happened. I think he was throwing them back. They might have been using some stuff. Who knows? Let's not speculate and get ourselves hooked up with the libel. At this point, he's hanging himself. We don't need to add to it. But allegedly smashed. <laughs> right. Allegedly, he looked pretty smashed for a guy who's been smashed once or twice on camera. But in all seriousness, there's no reason for him to think he's in the safe place. In my world, he was out with mates. He had some drinks. He talked. And it was probably a couple guys hanging out with the, the PGMOL ref. They got him back to the flat after for a few more pops and maybe a little smoke. And then before you know it, someone was like, this dude will say anything. Let's ask him questions like an interview. Yep. And then they put a camera in his face and he was like, oh, yeah, that cunt, blah, blah, blah. And then he makes the Milner comment and shows the picture of Milner. And like the whole time I'm thinking to myself, if I'm James Milner, I'm thinking to myself, man, that is one more freaking feather in the cap of James Milner. I helped end David Coote's career. I'm going down as the greatest Premier League player of all time. I That's the problem that, like, worries me. I mean, and I've seen, like, things like this in the past, and that's what I was referring to. Like, I've had it where, you know, like, a guy is going around, like, I worked in retail, so a guy is going around, uh, introdu you know, showing the new guy the store, and then they make an inside joke between with one of the guys as he's walking around and you know he himself was hispanic the other guy is african-american and they kind of go back and forth at each other like stereotype you know like they're, they're they're taking it as banter and just a joke but it can be taken out of context and obviously the per third person takes it out of context i almost like that third person took it out of context and all that kind of stuff that was a drama by itself but i feel like this is a case where that person knew exactly, hey, that was definitely not appropriate. Let's get more stuff. Like, let's get this on tape. I guess the question now is, how much more stuff is on tape? Because a guy doing that is not going to be satisfied with a 60-second clip while he's got Kud going off on everybody over there. So is there more on there? And two, like... We said, hey, you know, whoever saw this video is not going to be seen. 
well, that guy knows who saw this video as well. If he was blackmailing regarding releasing the video, what's him not releasing? Yeah, by the way, here's our Snapchat private group. And it's Taylor and Oliver and all those people laughing, putting laughing emojis on the video or something like that. And then you're another can of worms. So I feel like either they're going to have to make this go away really fast and act fast and say he's gone. You know, there was no excuse and we got rid of him. Let's move on. Because I think the more it sticks around and people start peeling the levels, as Costanza says, it's like an onion. The more you let, the more it stinks is what's going to happen. Every layer. Keep pulling yep. that layer back and your eyes water more and you keep doing it because you can't stop until you see the train wreck. And I think, I think you're right. I think that's what is coming. I expect this, like I said, I expect there to be some excuse making. I expect there to be some spin. Then I expect there to be a guy that has to go away and never be seen for again. Kind of like Bobby Madley was years ago when he just kind of fell off and then he wasn't there anymore. And I think David Coote will kind of be the guy that goes away. Probably so we don't point the fingers at all the other refs. I hope it isn't a group chat of all the referees because this league doesn't need any more excuse making this league doesn't need any more you know plights on its referees you know i think it's one of the things goldbridge actually gets right when he says it's the best league in the world with the worst officiating and the worst leaders running it which is like shocking that you could get to the best by having all the worst around despite, you. right yeah exactly despite the worst around you so 